Hi Spring fans! In this installment of Spring Tips, we're going to look at uh, Spring Data Couchbase. Now some of you may know that I did a, uh, did a few talks and I did a, a blog post a few years ago on uh, Spring Data uh, Couchbase and I did it on uh, in terms of Couchbase uh, 2 and 3.0. Well now Spring Data Couchbase 4.0 is out and uh, with it comes an updated Spring Data uh, uh, Couchbase binding, right? The, the binding itself has been rewritten from the ground up to integrate better with the um, Couchbase 4 uh, server. So in this uh, in this spring tip, we're going to take a look at uh, Couchbase and sort of the modern updated API. There's not a, a whole lot to offer here that's new, uh, you know, from the programming perspective, which is uh, by design. That's very, very convenient. But some of you may not know about Couchbase. Now, Couchbase is a uh, excellent NoSQL uh, database. It's a uh, sort of the, the mixture, the uh, the product of the uh, merging of two different technologies, uh, Membase, which is a Memcached-based uh, uh, database, uh, you know, uh, caching key value store uh, from from years gone past, and um, uh, CouchDB, which is a uh, document database that was uh, originally written by uh, uh, is it Damien Katz, I think, Damien Katz, who uh, uh, did, among many other things, uh, the architecture behind... Uh, uh, IBM IBM's Domino, right, which is a document server from decades ago. So a lot of a lot of history there, and uh, both technologies had their own sort of fledgling communities, uh, and they eventually sort of merged, right. So what you have now is a, a document database that uh, retrieves or accesses those documents by keys and values, uh, and it's completely horizontally scalable. So you have now a technology that can scale infinitely horizontally uh, and uh, that you can query very very conveniently and uh, that has a strong focus on uh, index IDs for retrieval but you can also do queries now there's a, a query language that works very nicely uh, and because of its distribution characteristics it makes it a very nice choice for scaling out horizontally if the if the need to require so let's go ahead and build a simple example here I'm going to say couch base demo I'll use Lombok here to make short work of the accessories and mutators and all that stuff I'll use uh, the Couchbase starter uh, in Spring Boot 1.4. So of course we're at 1.43. Uh, we're staring down Spring Boot 1.5, which is due uh, any minute now. Uh, but uh, 1.4 was the first uh, in first uh, iteration of Spring Boot to include uh, Couchbase support out of the box. That support has been in development uh, in sort of a branch for a long time, but it's only now that it's baked into uh, Spring Boot itself. Uh, and then. I think that'll do. I think that's enough for us to to uh, to get the job done. We, let's see, actually, we we'll use the web support and we we'll use actuator as well, so that way we can see the, uh, the state of our Couchbase connection. So we're going to go ahead and hit generate here. All right, and uh, it looks like we've already got an instance of this, so I'll delete that. I'll hit generate again. Open this up, and uh, we have Couchbase running on our local uh, machine here. So eight zero nine one. There it is, there's a console, and I'm already logged in. Or, uh, you know, I can be, like so. Hit cancel. And so when you log into the Couchbase server, uh, for, for the first time, it'll actually prompt you to set up a database and uh, uh, optionally join a cluster. If you if you have uh, an existing uh, Couchbase cluster running, it'll join that network if you want. Um, but I've already got an instance running, a very small instance, mind you, but it's an instance. And I've got one node, one server. But the nice thing about using Couchbase is that the programming model, you know, the sort of interaction with that that the technology is exactly the same, whether you're you're doing a completely distributed system or you're doing a single node kind of a kind of thing. So I've got a, uh, a data bucket here. A data bucket is sort of like a, a, a database inside of a server, like in a, a SQL database. Uh, it's a database or a schema, if you will, inside of a single server. You can have multiple buckets. Each bucket is also basically also corresponds to a table. So you put your document in this movie bucket, right? Right now my bucket is only taking up so much RAM, so much uh, RAM and so on. I've got 48 uh, uh, megs of RAM assigned. I've got a maximum of 100. So you have, you know, very, very good operationally friendly sort of uh, uh, interaction with the technology. You can garbage collect any sort of porous, uh, you know, unused space. You can uh, delete it, edit it, and so on. Um, specify any kind of operational concerns, the password for the bucket, all that kind of stuff. You can specify whether, whether replication should be uh, enabled, and in my case I don't have it, but uh, it could be useful. You can even tell it to automatically compact or garbage collect any sort of uh, unused space or any dead pointers and so on in the, uh, in the database. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel because I'm happy with the specified defaults. Uh, and what we want to do is we want to build a simple Spring Boot application 
that talks to to Couchbase. Right? So I'm going to go to our application.properties. I'll we'll say that we want to talk to the local host node, so couch base bootstrap hosts. And bootstrap host is actually a common delimited array uh, that's gonna that's gonna use to find any node. It doesn't matter which, right? It's completely decentralized. It's not like a, a leader worker uh, sort of uh, topology. It's just completely decentralized. So as long as it can find any node, uh, it'll then discover the topology of the rest of the cluster. In the case, in my case, uh, any node is every node since I've got one node, right? So it's local host. Uh, then we need to specify the password for the bucket, uh, which in this case is movie, and of course the, the bucket name itself we have to specify, which is name. So really I should have done it like that. Um, and then finally I want to tell it to auto index equals true, which means it's going to create uh, certain structures for us on that when it connects to the database based on what it discovers in our application. So uh, all those are very useful to have out of the box. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and create a, uh, a movie entity, uh, uh, an object that will uh, map or map to the uh, to an underlying document inside of our uh, Couchbase uh, bucket. So we're using the document annotation from Spring Data. Okay, this is the Spring Data uh, annotation. It maps to the Spring Data ORM uh, support. And right? so uh, we're also going to specify a key here called ID, and it's going to it's going to have an ID, uh, you know, mapping as well using Spring Data's annotation. Although now Couchbase, Couchbase itself also supports a mapping framework, uh, inspired I think very much by uh, their experience developing the Spring Data integration, and uh, we're going to specify a title. Right? Title. So there we go. There's the uh, title, and uh, you know I need to get some gators and so on. So, but instead of doing all that work myself, I'll use Lombok, uh, and I'll tell it to create an all args constructor, and uh, I'll tell it to create a no args constructor. Now, uh, no args constructor. And what I want is I need to specify both the ID and the title. The ID is something that we have to specify. The, the database won't do that for us. Um, so we have to provide a, a value for that as well, and we keep that. Right? It's up to the client, the producer of the object, to create an ID. And it's completely arbitrary. We're going to use a UUID, right? a unique ID. So we'll say class sample movie CLR implements command, and uh, we'll open up at component. Okay, and we're going to say that we want to inject our repository here. So I'll inject the repository, but we don't have a repository. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a Spring Data repository, interface movie repository, extends couch base repository. So this should feel very familiar if you've used any of the Spring Data projects, in particular with Spring Boot. So movie, and then the, the primary key type is of course Spring. Uh, and we can define custom queries as well, right? So, uh, let's say I want to find a record by its uh, by its title, right? Which is a very reasonable thing to want to do. Uh, we can define declaratively a single movie, um, like so. So, completable feature of movie. So, we're going to say that when the value is, is read, asynchronously know us, notify us uh, of the re retrieval of that um, of that uh, movie. Okay. So, there's the the method. We could of course just do a blocking movie, but wherever you can, you should take advantage of the asynchronous support here, right? So there's that. And uh, this gets turned into a query. This is using a new N12Q, which is the uh, query language that debuted in, in Couchbase 4. Historically, if you wanted to do any kind of interrogation or, or to do any kind of querying or analytics or predicates on top of the data store, you had to use uh, JavaScript views. So on the server side, you go here and you go to the uh, the bucket in particular, and you can see there's two things, documents and views. If I go to the views um, area, I can see there's development views, which can then get promoted to production views. So you can try stuff out and evaluate them and, and uh, you know update them here in the development thing. And then uh, I see the results here. So here's a view for every single record in the database, which has a uh, map function and a reduce function. Very common functional programming kind of stuff. So we're saying for every record that's been streamed from the database, uh, we're going to say if we if we see it, then we should go if it, and if it matches a certain, certain query, uh, you know, this is a field that'll be automatically saved for us in the document and the JSON structure that gets stored in the database. If that field, the underscore class field, equals the, the type of our POJO, then let's go ahead and um, 
emit it, which is to say add it to the result set. Right? So we want we want to we want to be able to do that. But we could of course be a little bit more intelligent. We might have a, a view that only returns a, you know a movie if this first test is true and you know a doc dot uh, uh, title equals gone with the wind, right? So you can do uh, whatever you want. You can create custom views, and these are sort of like stored procedures. They get stored on the server itself. Uh, and historically, with Spring Data, you, you you could only call these views. You could only tell Spring Data itself by these method names to call a view, right? So um, here's the Spring Data Couchbase annotation, and uh, you could tell which document, uh, which reduce function, if you want to do like an aggregate, like a count, for example, and which view name to use. In this case, we can let it just use the default, um, or it'll use N12Q, right? So that's the query language, the new query language, which looks and feels very much like uh, SQL. So that's that's a very, very powerful way to interact with the database, database server that didn't have before. Uh, so we can leave it like that. We don't need to specify custom view. Uh, and we can just save some data. So we'll say stream.of, we'll say done. Well, first of all, let's delete the data. So we'll say this that move repository that delete all. We'll say gone with the wind the wizard of Oz. Um, uh, it's a good movie. Uh, one, two, over the cuckoo nest, I think. Um, Doctor Strange, love, etc. And then we can map over each title. I'm going to save a record here in the database. So I'll say this type of movie repository. Save new movie. And again, here we need to generate the UUID, so UUID dot random UUID dot two string, passing in the title, and then we'll say this type movie repository dot find by title, and we're just gonna take any one of them just to confirm that everything worked. So we'll take that one title here, the uh, Oz title, and confirm that when we run the query. Uh, we can you know interact with it. So uh, here we go. We have a oops, oh we did the wrong ID collection. Let's do a completable future. Uh, talked about it. I completely forgot it. Have some, so do a completable completable future, and then uh, on delivery of that value, we say then accept. Right. So uh, movie. And we can just say system cut out. A print line. Move it. Okay, there's this. Place the lambda with the uh, uh, method reference there, and uh, that should do it, right? So there we are. There's a, a, a MongoDB. That's uh, right, a Couchbase uh, application in 59 lines, and uh, I think we should now be able to run it and see what happens. Now. Couchbase itself has a lot of redeeming fe features, a lot of things that uh, uh, make it stand out. Um, first of all, this supports you know uh, arbitrary kind of retrieval of data. You don't have to just use JavaScript. There's this SQL-like language that you can use as well. Uh, it's got geospatial support very much, uh, like uh, like uh, MongoDB and some other uh, sort of NoSQL differentiated uh, databases. But it also has other components that are good for um, offline to online. Uh, synchronization. There's something in particular called Couchbase Mobile, uh, which is ideal for having uh, on your embedded application, and which is designed to then connect to a, uh, a server and then synchronize the data. This makes it a, a great fit for any kind of mobile application, right? So that's just one of those things you get for free uh, by working with uh, Couchbase. Let's see what we what we have here. We don't want all of them. We want. Oh, I guess we don't need that. So it's telling me that it wants me to create the view called movie all. And so in order to do that, uh, in order to use it to delete all, I need the movie all uh, view. But for our purposes, I just want to demonstrate how nice it is to be able to use this, uh, which is an arbitrary query. And this, we don't need to provide a view. That's a nice new feature uh, in, uh, in Couchbase and in, in, in the Spring Data uh, Couchbase binding. Now, the Spring Data Couchbase binding uh, used to be a third party project that was maintained. Uh, outside of the Spring Data ecosystem. And uh, now, happily, it's part of the Spring Data release chain. And uh, you know, of course, it enjoys contributions uh, and leadership from the Couchbase team. But 
it gets released and uh, maintained along with the other spring projects, which I think is a really, really cool change of, of uh, events, right? So here we go. There's our movie, the Wizard of Oz, our unique ID, uh, worked as we expected, and so on. Uh, and that's it. Um, we have an application that's talking to the database. It's, it's up and running. Of course, I may want to inspect its health. So you'll recall that I added the actuator, the Spring Boot actuator, which is a, a framework that's designed to surface operational information about the application. And I would love to see the, uh, the, the health of the Couchbase uh, data store, but it's going to be there um, reflecting that this, the application's up rather. Um, so you get now you, you get you know smart integration around the Spring ecosystem uh, uh, with with Couchbase. So again, very very easy to get working, very easy to start. Uh, and so with that, um, thanks very much for watching, and uh, we'll see you next time.